is MMA Fight Corner, live on Fox Sports Radio from Las Vegas with your hosts, Billy Mira, Phil Devine, and Joey Varner. Hey, this is Mike Goldberg, voice of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and you are listening to the MMA Fight Corner. Here we go! Here we go! go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. You are here with myself, Billy Mira, Phil Devine, and Joey Vonner on this Friday afternoon, evening. And we have a pretty cool show lined up for you tonight. We have Yuri Villafort joining us later in the show. Is fighting Nash and Burrell at UFC 157 next week. Uh, plus some clips of our, our boy, last called Danny Castillo. Uh, who's getting ready to fight Paul Sass tomorrow on UFC on Fuel TV 7. So stick around and join in. And if you want to call in with your questions, 702-365-9200. Before we get into the UFC Fuel TV 7 card, Ultimate Fighter last Tuesday night, what are your thoughts, guys? Um, you know, it was, I guess... It's kind of hard to follow up the Uriah Hall knockout. Oh yeah, for the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah, the yeah. fight itself. Uh, I wasn't. It wasn't the most exciting fight. It was, um, you know, just Casey got dominated, you know, and it it was kind of what you you expected, and then, but the episode itself is great. I'm really digging the way the Ultimate Fighter is. It, it's a different. It's a different show. Yeah, the, the, the show itself, the quality, what was going on, the filming, the interviews of the fighters, that was awesome. It looked great. Um, I didn't even mind the, the little rap battle. I thought that was entertaining, you know. No, no real uh, db -ery, if you will, because I get censored when I actually say DB. So for you, Armando, I'm saying db -ery instead of what rhymes with yeah. poosh. <laughs> it was good. It was instead good. Of, it was instead good of poosh, saggery. <laughs> now you guys know what I'm talking about. But the show itself was awesome. I'll tell you what, the, you know, the fight wasn't exciting. But it's like I expected more out of Kevin Casey. You know, you're a Hicks and Gracie black belt, and you just laid on your back in full closed guard the whole time. You know, there was no hip movement. There was no aggressive attacking from bottom. You know, there, there was no, no nothing. And, and it looked like, actually, when he stood up and they started to engage, he had the crisper stand-up. You know, he just didn't know what to do with it. The problem is, is when, especially when you have, a, you know, such a good – practitioner of jiu-jitsu that when they're comfortable on their back and comfortable in someone's guard that they'll stay there and that that was the problem he was comfortable there he didn't want to do anything and unfortunately you know it's not the way it works in mma it's not a jiu-jitsu match yeah but you know what it's just like when you are a professional fighter and jiu-jitsu is your strength you had to attack from bottom. Even if he was in a jiu-jitsu tournament, he would have lost. All, you know, he, all he did was was shuffle back into guard. That's well, it. Every time he got full, past, the full, shrimp and over, get guard. Right. Yep. There was no, like, you know, no moving of his hips, no threatening submissions, no attacking, no tra transitions, you know, not, not going for an armbar to a triangle, to maybe turning down and trying to get back to your feet, to, to a sweep. I mean, for, for regardless, whether it was a fight or a jiu-jitsu competition, he did nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I did the whole nothing <laughs> hand gesture. <laughs> Very passionate about this yes. subject. Uh, <laughs> MMA, baby. MMA, baby. MMA. MMA. Now, let's get into a little bit about this UFC on Fuel TV card happening. Now, I, I want to make this perfectly clear for the listeners and anybody who doesn't realize this. This is happening 12 o'clock tomorrow. Yeah, okay. it's, actually, it's earlier. It's earlier if you want to get up and you want to see the very, very entertaining fights that will be on uh, Facebook. They start at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Pacific time. All right. You got, you're a little luckier you're on the East Coast. You got a 12 noon there, but it will be over by 3 o'clock in the afternoon. What, what a great day, way to start your day, right? I like that, that, not just that, but the fact that it rhymed. Yeah. What a great day to start your day at 9 a.m. We have MMA. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a rap, yo. And not only MMA, we have, uh, we have a title fight. And we have a sick card. Head to bottom sick card. Stylistically, the matchups, the people fighting, the way, you know, when I'm doing my picks, my breakdowns, trying to play it out in my head, seeing how it could go. They're all exciting. They're all exciting, exciting, stylistically entertaining fights. Props to Joe Silver for putting this card together. I thought you were going to say props to me for some reason, but... Uh, <laughs> always. Props, always. Props, props to me to for, going, for going perfect in my predictions again. Could it happen three, three weeks in a row? 
Oh, could, could, I, could. It could, could, could I, it you know, happen? We'll see. I, we'll I see. think if it does happen again, Joey Varner will not be working on this show and will be working exclusively for the Las Vegas sports books. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you what. Last week, $25 on my 5-5 five, five parlay paid me 2500 This week, I found another, another parlay. Uh, actually, uh, our good friend of the show, uh, Jason Ford, a.k.a. John J. Rambo on Twitter, if you follow him at Twitter, at, at John J. Rambo, uh, something like that. Yes. Uh, he found he found a, a pick for me that's 28 to 1. So I'm going to put down 100. Hopefully I'll win 28. Which fight is this? It's a four-fight parlay. Should Come I on. share it for you now? Come on, Vanna. Share your secrets the with, the, with the audience. The four-fight parlay is Swanson, Riddle, Ooh. Last call, Grisby and Nedkov. Okay, those are all my picks. You know, I oh. I, I, I do like it. I do like it. Um, we'll we'll get into our picks in a minute and talking about it. I do like one in there, throws me for a loop. Swanson? No. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, actually, no. It's not Swanson. The one that throws me for the bit of a loop is Grisby. Really? Yeah. You know, but just against be- Ogle. I I understand that. I understand that, but right now I'm just at a point that I don't know where to go with this guy. This was a guy who was coming into the UFC, was expected to be the next the next thing for Aldo, and he's gone zero and three since. Well, you who know, he's lost to and how? I, I understand he's lost. He he has lost to some some tough guys. Didn't he lose to Poirier in the in his first yep, one? Yeah. But it's just you know, I, I don't know what we're gonna get out of him. He needs a win desperately here, but traveling, you know, Ogle. He didn't have much on the Ultimate Fighter, but one thing he has is heart, and I'm questioning Grisby's at the moment. So I'm just, that's okay. the only one okay. that I'm kind of see. I went know. with that. I, I looked at that, you know, and but I'll tell you what, he's emotional. Yeah, he is a very Ogle emotional. Is very <laughs> emotional. I'll tell you what, that can be your best friend or your worst enemy. In a fight with someone tough in your hometown, pressure is a catalyst for emotions. And it doesn't always make you perform at your best. When you perform at your best, you need to be relaxed and to feel good. There's this what's called an, an ideal performance state of mind. And pressure and for an emotional guy doesn't isn't always conducive for being in that ideal performance state of mind. And he's a guy that looks like he cries, he breaks. You, know, you look at who he's fought and how he's beat him. You look at Grisby, who he's fought, how he's beat him. The fact that he's lost his last three just kind of makes it to me that, you know, he, it's it's the turnaround time. You know, he's got a guy in front of him that he can highlight real, look good, whether it's standing or on the ground. You know, stylistically, I just don't see any way for Ogle to beat Grisby. So you're saying that the nickname isn't how it is. He's no fluke. Josh Grisby's going to pull it off tomorrow. He's no fluke against Ogle. Against Ogle? You know, okay. we, we go back to the Jose Aldo talk, you know. I mean— That's a horse of a different color right exactly. there. Exactly. <laughs> All right, well, you, you kind of convinced me there, so we'll see. Because it's funny when I, I wrote down who I, I was picking, and you know, I'm, I'm, why I, why I was leading towards them, and there's two that I didn't write a winner. Who's that? That's Ogle and, and uh, Grisby, and I wrote absolutely nothing down for Castillo and Sass. Really? It's just, just, just because it's just, you know. Because you were going to pick Sass? No, I'm, oh no, 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 oh, okay. I'm picking and you Danny. Didn't want to say, okay. I, I'm picking Danny, but you know, it's just one of those, you know. Like, I, I don't want to be all over Danny's not, you know, about how great he is, you know, because he's a friend of mine, and I also don't want to dispel anything about Sass because Sass is the no-joke kind of guy you don't, want, you don't want to be, and it's such a tough fight for Danny when, you know, you're getting into a fight with, a, you know, D- Danny Castillo, he's got much better hands, now working with Dw- Dwayne Ludwig, much improved fighter, looked great at weigh-ins, okay, but his strength is his wrestling, okay, and his ground and pound. And the one place you don't want to be is in in that position with Paul Sass. I got you. You know, so we, we spoke to Danny, and Danny had some very interesting things to talk about when it came to that, you know, and so much. It, it was very uh, – he's got some – done some interesting work. Right. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we have a pre-tape of a couple of clips here of Danny talking about his upcoming fight. And, uh, Armando, why don't we uh, lay that in there? Maybe have uh, the fact this week before he left to London at this time, he'll have a new corner man. Oh, man, it's awesome. I can't really, uh, I can't really speak highly enough of him. He's, uh, he, he's a perfect fit for the team. You know, he has the same mentality as all of us, and you know, he has a great sense of humor and um, okay. he has a big heart. Every, every day is like a striking clinic with him. He's just, um, 
you know, I, I can't believe that our team has done so well without a coach like So, So what brought on the change? What brought Dwayne in? Um, well, Master Tom was, uh, you know, kind of the head striking coach, and he had took off for a week and ended up staying longer than a week. He told uh, Uriah that he was just going to leave for a week, and he ended up staying for, you know, six to seven weeks out in Texas. And, you know, there was guys that were fighting, and, you know, it just, uh, we just didn't have really that coach, and we're, we're changing. I picked the initiative. He went and uh, talked to a few coaches, and he thought that Dwayne Love would, would be a perfect fit. And everyone on the team is, are huge fans of him. And, uh, you know, uh, he was uh, communicating with us uh, via text message me, text messages with me through the whole through my whole camp. And then uh, he's been here for the last four weeks, so I've had four weeks of work with him. Yeah, he, he was tweeting some real funny pictures, and... Uh... You know, it was fun, you know, just getting to see some of the camp that you guys were going through, through Dwayne's eyes, because, you know, we've met Dwayne before, I've known him for a bit, you know, like you said, very fun guy, uh, very technical and a real good coach, so I'm really looking forward to see what he's done with uh, Team Mail. You guys got a lot of fights coming up, um, it looks like everybody right now seems to be in camp at once. Yeah, well, uh, Joseph just won, um... You know, he didn't really get too much time with Dwayne, um, but he got he got a few practices in with him. Um, I'm coming up next, and then Chad and, and Joseph, I'm mean, Chad and Uriah are up also. So, um, you know, you'll be able to see, you know, firsthand exactly, you know, the, the changes that uh, Dwayne has brought to the camp. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's, By it's- the way, just real quick. That that the audio quality is great. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. Well done, Phil. Is this in your custom studio at your house? And actually, it was standing over a cell phone with speaker on because we tried to get Danny onto the show uh, last week, but because of the uh, Laker game, we were preempted, and he had to leave for London. Okay, I don't accept. Either of those excuses. <laughs> All I know is that fact, you should have flew. I thought we weren't playing them. I don't know where they came in. <laughs> no, we no, we. we I are used to have buddies them. in high school that you know they're going to be rappers, and so they made a studio in their house, and they took like the memory foam, like what's that? Not the memory foam, the egg, egg carton. Yeah, <laughs> and they lined their closet with it, and you know did this whole little build out. I'm going to call them and put you in touch with them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that to my house. The less interviews I have to do at home, the better. <laughs> right. Exactly. We'll get you. We'll get you some kind of a recording thing here no. with Armando or something. We'll set something up for you. But he also discussed how he prepared for the submission game of Paul Sass tomorrow and his sass angle. Check it out. You know, yeah, jiu-jitsu back in general, you know, he's got heel hooks, he's got a whole lot of he transitions really well. Um, you know, I didn't really focus too much on triangle defense more than I did his triangle awareness. Um, you know, once you're in a triangle, the, the defense, you know, to a triangle, if someone's got a really good triangle, uh, but you've only got a mat, you know, second. You know, to 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 do something about the triangle. So awareness is where it comes from, and um, you know, I, I feel like uh, I got some good work with, with my camp and my jiu-jitsu instructors. Um, you know, I, I went down to Cedar Gracie this past week, and I and I got some good work with Nate. And then, um, you know, I was also able to get some work in with uh, Nick uh, Nick Diaz. And then, um, you know, Cedar Gracie kind of it gave me a little uh, a little clinic on. Um, you know, see mission defense for the triangle. We worked on Omoplata. We worked on a, on a variety of different things. And, um, you know, he, he's awesome, too. Uh, that was the first time I ever, you know, got to work with him hands-on. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I can't speak highly enough about him. He, he showed me so much in a matter of, you know, just one session. And so I'm really fortunate to have those guys apart um, uh, uh, helping me and also uh, Caesar to, to, you know, to, to show me grace me with uh, some of his knowledge. This guy's coming in, all right, um, on his first loss, Danny. This is this, you know, this is something that you've had to deal with and every other fighter has really had to deal with, but this is the first time he's coming in now knowing that he's beatable. And not only beatable, but beatable at his own game. He was submitted in his last fight. Do you think that's going to bring any, any extra intensity for Paul Sass coming into this fight against you? You know, I, I hope I hope it uh, lays uh, is heavy in his hand. You know that uh, he just lost, and they're kind of going into the next fight. And that we're in his hometown, he has all that pressure. You know, I hope there's a ton of pressure. I hope he had a terrible camp and he's not stay ready to fight me. Uh, <laughs> but 
I've been there, and uh, I had my first loss, and I had my loss. I've prepared for the best ball time. The way I look at them is like a wounded animal, and I can strike it at any time. And, uh, you know, that's what I prepare for. Uh, you know, I come out going, uh, going to spin and, and looking to knock me out. So I'm prepared for that. I'm prepared for jiu-jitsu. I'm just prepared for a good fight. Um, I've got to have wins over, over Jacob and, and Michael Johnson. And when I beat him, you know, I, I want to see how the people do the MMA math with that. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm looking forward to, too. You know what I love the most about that interview? It sounds like you're at a press conference. Your well, I, very I, own press I, conference, I just want to say, as, a, as a, a host and producer of this show, you should have checked that quality of that air. <laughs> you know what? It doesn't sound like a press conference to me. It sounds like a, a, a jail cell. <laughs> like he's giving a jail cell, and uh, you know, like he's I in guess prison. A like, yeah, that's the lawyer, and his, he can't hold the phone because he's in handcuffs. So it's got to be on speaker for him. He's like, yeah, well, uh, you know, well, he came at me first, so I don't know what happened. <laughs> you know, uh, wh- if you want to hear the rest of that interview, which we'll get into a little bit more about what he talks about is sobriety as well. And, you know, because when Phil and I first got here, one of the first people that we made friends with was Danny Castillo. And we used to go out drinking with him. And it's kind of odd now because he's sober now, and he's been sober for what, like eight months now, Phil? It's been a while. He, he's you know pretty much uh, gotten the alcohol out of his system. It, during one point of the interview, he was talking about how he had to wake up in the morning sometimes and go and check and see if he didn't leave beer bottles around if he wasn't drinking the night before because he'd wake up with these feelings like I got up in the middle of the night and I went and had some drinks while like while he was sleeping. Like he wow. was he he he. It's not like I, and and we talked about it. It's not like he was he. I, I wouldn't classify him as a functioning alcoholic, but you know he got the last the name last call for a reason. The dude knows how to party. He likes to party. He, and and he but like I remember after the MMA awards that night he was, I, I, he was throwing shots of, of Patron at Billy, remember that? like making fun of Billy because of the faces he was making. He was buying Billy shots of water afterwards <laughs> as chasers because of Billy's face drinking the Patron and he no problem whatsoever. Well, th- but the next very next day. He's back in Sacramento, in the gym, right? Training like an animal. That right? was that was the part that said it surprised me the most because I remember saying to him, "I'm going to be sleeping until the afternoon tomorrow." I was like, "How are you getting up and training?" And that's that's what you call a functioning alcoholic. But I, Glad to see him now that he's basically got that out of his life because I'm I'm sure it's going to help also with well, his training. Real as quick well. though, I got to disagree with you 100 percent on calling that a functioning. Yeah, alcoholic I don't think that is. I can tell you, I can name you know off the top of my head. 10, 15, 20 top MMA pros who party. They go out and rage. You know, they don't drink every day. They don't drink every night. On the weekends come or post fights, they'll party, and uh, and then they'll they'll be at the well, gym the next morning. What I'm saying is he they'll got rage. the name Last Call, and I think to him, of partying. he was a functioning guy, and I think it was something that he wanted <laughs> to get out of his life. No, yeah, like he I was said, a partier. Was, yeah, I, yeah, he was I a would... partier, but, I, but for whatever reason, he got it out of his life, and, and, and so well. But and but just so I can go right now, I'm telling him you said that. Yeah, Billy's on air telling him I'm you're, saying you're, I'm, you're, I'm, you're an alcoholic. You well, I'm going to say you are an alcoholic because you fed me so many shots that night that you deserve for me to say that. Well, let's get off this. He almost made me an alcoholic. Let's actually, let's get back on. Billy making faces while he's taking Patron shots? What are you, a girl? Uh, that's, no, that, was what that, that was what they were saying. <laughs> <laughs> Heidi no, no. laughs because she's like, no, I'm a girl. I don't make faces when I drink my Patron. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, how about we do this? We'll take a break. We'll go over the fight card for tomorrow. We'll take our picks, which I'm sure we're all anticipating Joey Varner's picks over here. But before we do, let me tell you a little bit about LASIK in Nevada. I have to tell you about an amazing experience I had right here in Las Vegas. I recently had the LASIK procedure done to correct my eyes to better than 2020. I don't need glasses anymore, and I'm telling you, it's like a miracle. Dr. Rothman and his staff were incredible. Incredible through the whole process and extremely professional. I urge anyone out there who's thought about getting LASIK, go speak to my doctor, Dr. Rothman. He offers a free consultation and 50% of premium LASIK when you mention my name, Billy Mira, and 0% financing available. Call 702-636-2010. 702-636-2010. You're going to be delighted you did. I know I was. We come back. UFC on Fuel 7 card, our picks, and a couple of interviews as well. Don't go anywhere. MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. The MMA Fight Corner. 
Hi, this is Billy Muir from the MMA Fight Corner Radio Show here on Fox Sports Radio. And I want to tell you about a great gym right here in Vegas that is helping me get into way better shape while teaching me to protect myself like an MMA fighter, even though I have no plans of ever stepping inside the cage. Extreme Couture helps me and plenty of other men, women, and children get into better shape while having a great time in a family atmosphere with coaches leading classes who really care about me. Where else can you go and see world-class athletes like Randy Couture and a host of other UFC fighters training? Nowhere. So whether you're someone who just wants to compete or get in shape, learn boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, grappling, jiu-jitsu. Oh, and I almost forgot, they have great kid classes as well. Extreme Couture is the place for you. No matter what skill level you're at, trust me, I know, it helped me get my butt right back into shape. Call and visit this state-of-the-art facility today. Call 702-616-1022. That number again is 702-616-1022. You'll be glad you did. I know I was. I can help the next customer over here. Oh, thank you. Hi. Wow, that's a lot of books. Let's see, how to keep your child safe. Childproofing your home, childproofing your yard, childproofing your in laws' home and yard. Well, I'm guessing you have a little one at home. Yeah. Well, it looks like you must take good care of her. Oh, thank you. Now, let's see. Parents' Guide to Safe Toys. That's a really good one. Parents' Guide to Safe Foods. Parents' Guide to Safe Safety Products. Parents' Guide to Parenting Guides. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater and other safety tips. Of all the things you can read about keeping your child safe, the most important is attached to the back of their car seat. Read the instruction manual and learn to use the latch system. It makes it easier to be sure your child's car seat is installed correctly. Parents' Guide to Telling Other Parents How to Raise Their Kids. To learn more, go to safercar.gov. Anchor, tether, latch, the next generation of child safety. A message from the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ag Council. Hey, ball, uh, those new Jordan kicks? Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Yeah, pretty pricey. Where'd you get the cheese for those? Well, since I got LASIK from Dr. Rothman, I've saved a ton in context, plus all the accessories and the glasses I used to wear on the weekends, not to mention my sports glasses for when I play. Yeah, I see how those expenses could add up. It goes on forever, huh? Yeah, the savings are really something, and the eyesight we've got now is priceless. I love my LASIK. I'm seeing better now than I ever did with my glasses. Well, enjoy the kicks, my friend. I'll see you later. Hey! Where are you going? I'm going shopping with my savings, my friend. Hey, you know, I could use a new t-shirt to go with my new shoes. <laughs> yeah, nice try. Find out how much you'll save over a long term with state-of-the-art LASIK from the docs who have done over 50,000 procedures. Call 636-2010 because your consultation is free at LASIK of Nevada. 636-2010. For better sight, all right, call LASIK of Nevada. What's up, fight fans? Wondering where to go when the MMA Fight Corner is not airing on Fox Sports Radio or Fox 5 TV? Go to MMAFightCorner.com for all the latest MMA news and gossip and the most exclusive interviews anywhere with your favorite fighters. That's MMAFightCorner.com, your all-access pass to everything MMA. I love how people are surprised. This is the Dan Patrick Show. Oh, yeah. Everything about Dwight Howard is self-awareness. Understand who you are, what you are, where you are. And that's part of my problem. He's been wishy-washy in Orlando. Who do you want to be? What do you want to be? You have this opportunity here, and he's going to regret it. I know, great talent. You know, you tell me that until the counts come home. I don't care. It's understanding this. Michael Jordan, in an interview with Ahmad Rashad, said that Kobe has the same affliction as I do. That's how he turned it. It's like a disease. It's a curse because you want to win so badly. And what Michael's saying is it consumes you. Now, I'm not asking Dwight Howard to be consumed by it, but let me know that at least it's in your body, in your DNA. Oh, yeah. The Dan Patrick Show. Call me. It's the Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings at 6 on Fox Sports Radio 920. Stop. Stop paying too much interest on your title loan. Go to Fast Cash Title Loans, where they're offering a 9.95% rate. While everyone else is paying up to 24% on their title loans, you can get one from Fast Cash Title Loans for only 9.95%. If you have a title loan somewhere else, Fast Cash will go with you to pay it off and get you a new loan at a lower rate. Come into Fast Cash Title Loans today and pay only 9.95%. Call 685 4100. That's 685 4100. This is American Psycho, Stephen Bonner, and you're listening to MMA Fight Corner. This is your eye favorite, the California Kid, and you listen to the MMA Fight Corner. 
MMA Fight Corner. Welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. Here with myself, Billy Mira, Phil Devine, Joey Vonner, Heidi Fang, Armando behind the board. And before the break, we were hearing from Danny Castile. By the way, I think we're going to have the rest of that interview where he talks about his sobriety and anything else. That great quality interview that we had <laughs> before the break will be on the should be on the website mmafightcorner.com. In a few minutes, we're supposed to have Yuri Villafort joining us as well. But first, let's see if we can rub Merlin over here, Joey Vaughner's head. Oh snap! <laughs> oh snap! And start with the fight card and get everybody's picks for the fight card happening tomorrow. UFC on Fuel 7. Going to be awesome, man. Wake up in the morning, grab a cup of coffee, and just get into a crazy mood right from, right from the get-go. <laughs> Wake up in the morning. morning. Uh, first, let's wow, go. That, and you talk about the quality of the audio in the interview. <laughs> <laughs> ouch, ouch. I know you weren't talking about me because I was in an 80s glam rock band with long flowing hair. Oh, That's wait, no, right. That, that, that was, was Billy. Billy. Singing, <laughs> singing songs like Take You Away. Yes, that yeah. was me. And Bad Time to Be in Love. That would be myself. But anyway, let's get back to the fight card. All right. Ren and Braille, McDonald, what do you think, guys? Let's start with the top and go down. Uh, <laughs> dude, this is, this, is a, this is an interesting fight. Um, you know, Michael McDonald's Dude's got power. Dude, dude hits hard, you know, but will he be able to hit Barrow? Barrow is, uh, you know, he hasn't lost in forever. I think he lost his very first fight. He's, like, won, like, I don't know, 19, 20 in a row. Some, somewhere between those 31 wins, he's got a no contest. But 95% takedown ratio. Like, dude, he blocks so many takedowns. Uh, Uriah couldn't take him down. Jorgensen couldn't uh, take him down. Uh, he's got great submissions. Trains with uh, Aldo down on Un Novo Uniao. And, uh, you know, Michael McDonald's t right now has the option, or the, the option, <laughs> no option in my opinion, but the chance to become the youngest UFC champion ever. Ever. He's just turned 22. Okay. But I, I think the biggest win he has and, and the most, you know, the, his call to fame is knocking out Miguel Torres. And I don't know. If that's enough for him to be in there with Hennon Burrell. Yeah, brother, I'm with you 100%. You know, when you look at the roster of uh, the who's who of they both fought, the biggest name, as you said, is Miguel Torres. And Miguel Torres, at the at the latter stages of his career, when, when he looked weathered, when he didn't look like the beast that was, you know, the WEC champ, whereas Hennon Burrell... He's beat a who's who's a contenders, you know. He beasted a stud in, in Brad Pickett. Stood he, in the pocket with him, yeah, exchanged with him, and traded had no with issues. Him. He beasted a, an excellent wrestler and well rounded fighter. He made him look amateur level in Scott Jorgensen, who's one of the who's a top ten fighter. He completely thoroughly dominated Uriah Faber, who was a, the, the the reigning champ, the heir apparent. You know, he WBC was the WEC Golden the Boy. WEC Golden Boy, you know. And so when you look at the the, the level of competition, and you look at the the fact that he has never been hurt. When do you see him get hurt? You know, and, and really hurting him is, is, in my opinion, McDonald's only chance. Yep. You know, McDonald, I don't think he can wrestle with him. I don't think he, aside from his boxing, I don't think his kicks, knees, or elbows, his full round MMA outside of boxing is better or even near the level of Browns, you know? Um, and then I look at the camps, you know, and no disrespect to McDonald's camps, but he's kind of coming out of a podunk gym in, 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 in uh, Modesto, Modesto, California, yeah. you know, training with his brothers, which has done great for him. But Brown's coming out of the hottest camp in mixed martial arts right now. And when he was in his training camp, so were world champion Jose Aldo in his training camp for his fight, world champion Edward Dantes in his fight, Marlon Sandro. There was a couple, there was someone else fighting in cage for a cage as well, you know, for a belt that was all in training camp at the same time. It's like when you're in training camp with your teammates, world champion teammates, and you're all in it together, it provides for a special environment where this, the, the, the level of training, they raise the bar on that. And all those names I named already won their fights. So there's the momentum, there's the steam, there's the role, you know, and I just think. I think everywhere I, I really wanted to find a way for McDonald because I like him. I just couldn't do it, and I, I think Brown uh, 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 pieces him up. Yeah, I think so too. And when you you know you mentioned all those guys, and you know the one name that obviously sticks out is Jose Aldo, and the only reason that you know Henan Barrow is not good, uh, probably he would be champion of the one forty five division. He dropped. That, that's the hardest part of his fighting is him making 135. That's another thing, though, is that McDonald is a kid. 
Yeah. Brown's a grown man, and he's a man that should be at a higher weight class. If if if, if Jose vacates weight class, Brown's gonna move back mm-hmm. up. So that's just telling me that Brown's gonna be the bigger, the stronger of the two, the guy who's gone 25 minutes before without any problem. You know, it's 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 almost like a, a grown man versus a a boy. Yeah, absolutely. I gotta go with Brown on this one. You know, Michael McDonald. Uh, he's got a great chance, but you know I think it's a little too early. He's got a puncher's chance. Absolutely, he has a puncher's chance, but like you said, you hit the nail on the head. I think it's too early, too soon. Yeah. All right. So I think. And by the way, I want to just re say it. He non Burrell. I always he non Burrell. I always say it. Uh, differently than that, because they are. Do you say it's, it's Henan Barrow? Why Hennen don't I say Heenan? Heenan. See, I said it wrong, too. <laughs> and, 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 and technically, Barrow's just his, his nickname. <laughs> Barrow's oh, really? just his nickname. Yeah, his last name is Pagato. Oh, wow. You Look say... Pagato, potato. I say Pagato. Potato, potato. <laughs> All right, well, it looks like, we're, it looks like it's unanimous for yeah. Burrell. Hen and Burrell. Hen and Burrell tomorrow night. And tomorrow day. Tomorrow round, day. Round, tomorrow day. Round, yes, 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 yes. Next fight. Did you see that video? Yes, I did. That was cool. That was a very fun video. The UFC they video, did. they did the Hen and Burrell. Bum, Burrell. With Uriah and yeah. the Oh, that was a guys. long time. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. All right, also, next fight on this card, Cub Swanson, and to me, I really like this fight. Dustin Poirier. Yeah, you know, originally it was supposed to be Dennis Seaver against Cub Swanson, but Seaver got hurt, and one of the, I wouldn't say rare, but one of the really good occasions where we're getting possibly a better fight. I know Seaver's looked amazing at 145, probably the weight class he's needed to be at, but such a small guy. But Dustin Poirier stepping in in his place, you know, um, it's a good fight. It's a real good fight. Great fight. You know, Cubs, I think they're so equal in so many areas but the one thing that stands out with me is we we saw Poirier in his last fight with Jonathan Brookins. He was getting rocked a little bit. And Jonathan Brookins isn't the most technical striker I've ever seen, or has he been known as, you know, this knockout guy. And, and he was handling, you know, Poirier on the feet. I think, du- you know, Dustin keeps those hands down a little too low, and that's a real bad mistake to make against a guy like Cub Swanson. I mean, the last three fights he's had, he's knocked people out. The one hiccup he's had in the UFC was against Ricardo Lamas. All right, and that was a great fight up until he got submitted. But he got, he knocked out, um, I can't even remember who his last two fights were, but they were knockout of the Knights. Right. You know, Cub Swanson is not a guy you want to keep your hands down with. And Dustin Poirier, it's a tough fight. You know, I think on the ground, I think Poirier's a little better. All right, and that's been an issue with Cub Swanson, too. That dude gets taken down. You know, I think in every fight he's been taken down. He doesn't seem to avoid, you know, or even fight a takedown. He has no problem being on his back, but he doesn't want to be on his back against a guy like Poirier. Very interesting style matchup. I, I'm going to go with Cub Swanson on this one. Ooh. No, I, you know what? I, I'm a big Diamond fan. You know, Poirier, I like him. I think mm-hmm. he's a classy guy. I, I Personality, I like him. Watching him fight, I like him. As well as Cub, you know, I've been I've known Cub since before he was in the WC, since I think King of the Cages. He used to come stay at Joe Daddy's house, and I'd be, you know, I'd be hanging out at Joe Daddy's house with him. You know, here's a kid that I've seen grow in the sport, and I'm a big fan of his as a fighter. Cub Swanson is one of these guys who who you always heard about the potential of. Like this kid has the potential to do something special. You know, in the gym he's a beast, but he seemed to have hiccups in these in the big fights. You know, absolutely a mental mental breakdowns, almost brain farts. And it seems like with the tear he's on, he's gotten over that. He's kind of coming to his own. He's found his flow. He found his rhythm. He's finally living up to the potential that everyone talked about him having. Um, and Poirier, you know, coming off the biggest loss of his career, uh, he comes back and he doesn't look that impressive. He looks kind of flat. You know, he, he gets clipped. He gets rocked. You know, I just think the momentum, the steam is in Swanson's favor. I think he's getting better. Um, and, and I think Cub's going to do it. That was the one thing that I had, lo- you know, going against Cub Swanson was the fact that he's had those hiccups in his career. You right. look at the Jens Pulver fight. He, I mean, that was his first loss. He went in there talking so much trash. It was the biggest fight of his career, and he got choked out in 22 seconds. Right. You know, then he's got Aldo, and all he talks about is how there's no I mean, Aldo's going to outstrike him. There's no way Aldo's going to going to take him down. No way he's going to beat him. He gets knocked out in eight seconds with a double flying knee. But look you at know, but look but at those two the, losses. Yeah, no, but you're absolutely right. First and, lightweight and, champion ever. And then, but he's gotten over that. He's gotten over the hiccups in the big fights. And I think you know he had it in the UFC on one on Fox One, on the undercard against Lamas. But look at Ricardo Lamas. Look at right. the, look at look at what he is. People didn't know who he was. Now right. that that fight put him on the map. I, I think Cub Swanson takes this one. You too, Joey. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got Cub. Um, yeah, not, 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 nothing else to say. 
It's a All good right. fight, close fight. Yeah. Good fight. Thank you, Joe Silva. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to go with Dustin Poirier on this fight. And what about you, Amanda? <laughs> how, how, Dustin how Poirier. You, how you guys, uh, Billy, how you have it? How do you what? see him doing it? I think do it. Uh, he's going to he's gonna give you a flying kick and kick him right in the face and knock him out. <laughs> I think he's going to submit him. <laughs> he's going to submit Big him. Big flying kick. He's going to go do somersaults. He's Joey, when you, haven't you learned when it's time to ask a serious question, you're not supposed to ask the least serious person in the room? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just not, I'm just not used to that person not being me, so I'm going for a loop. <laughs> no, I, I like Dustin Chances in this fight. And you too, Armando? Yes, me too. What about you, Heidi? Poirier. Poirier. I like Dustin, and I think he'll submit him. All right, all right, by submission, by submission. And also, next fight on this card at 2.05, light heavyweight, Jimmy Manua. Manawa? Manua? Mm -hmm. Manua. <laughs> what is it? Manua. Manua. <laughs> Ma like Manua, like the rock band. I, how did I know that was coming? Because uh, you knew, because you knew it was coming. I didn't even know there was a rock band. <laughs> yeah, with uh, Ross, the boss's lead guitar player. Cyril Diabate. Yeah, this is a fun fight, too. I mean, you got two stand-up fighters, two guys that are going to sit there and trade leather. Uh, Minowa, we, we saw what he did in his fight against uh, Kyle Kingsbury in his debut. Just absolutely mangled that eye. Like, dude, people were asking how he was continuing through the round after the first round. You right. know, second round was just like, what's going on here? This guy's taking a beating. But you know what we saw? We saw an issue with a little bit of a gas tank with Jimmy. You know, he looked, poster boy looked like uh, he's got a little bad cardio issue. But the one thing I like about this guy is he's been offered a UFC contract twice before in his career, and he's passed them up because he didn't think he was ready. Right now he thinks exactly. he is, and I think against a guy like Dabate, world class striker. You know, I know he's the striking coach over at Team Quest for you know, uh, he was on the Ultimate Fighter as a coach. You know, uh, he's got some big wins in the UFC or four wins in the UFC. But look at all the guys he's beaten; they're no longer in the UFC. Right. So I, I, I I'm gonna go with Minowa on this one. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you know, one of the things I talked about earlier was the training camp. And Diabati in training camp right now with Dan Henderson as he prepares to fight Machida. I think that that always helps someone get to the level they need to be at. Uh, but that being said, I just think stylistically this is a better fight for Minowa. I think uh, uh, Diabati is a great striker. You know, he utilizes all his weapons. I think Minowa, the way he strikes, the, 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 the punching power, the aggressiveness, I, I think that's the perfect style to beat Diabati. I think he's going to get in his face and just, just bring it to him. Yeah, he's going to shut him down. And Kingsbury had trouble taking him down. So, yeah. you know, Minowa, and it wasn't until you saw how gassed he was in the second round that he was able to take him down. But right. He was stuffing everything in the first round. You know, I, I know diabate has gotten some submission, you know, skills over the last few years. Uh, but I don't think it's going to happen that way. I think Mina was. it's going to be a stand-up fight, and it's going to be a fun one. I'm with you. Yeah, anybody named Mana has got to win. Come on, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, especially after the big rock band. And, yeah. and, and, hey, dude, his inspiration, Iron Mike Tyson. I mean, that, that, that's his role model, and that's what he has is KO power. But he's a ferocious. He is. He if is you're ferocious. you're ferocious like Mike Tyson, you're going to do all right. Uh, now, speaking of another rock band, Joey, <laughs> Phil's gonna get a kick out of this one. Gunner Nelson, you remember Nelson? It's not. Oh, it's not Nelson. Gunner yeah, Nelson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nelson. <laughs> didn't they do it's it? not that guy. Wait, I know you yeah. think it is. Wait, didn't Nelson do Winds of Change? Yes. Yeah. No. Or, yeah. That's yeah. So, no. 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 That's Scorpions yeah. did oh, Winds Scorpions. of Change. No, oh man, I love his rock uh, <laughs> trivia. Well, how about him said yeah when I said that? You blasted my rock no, trivia. No, no. You were like yeah. And you no, started no. singing something. I was gonna say no. I just said it. It's the song. Here she comes. Show me the rain. Don't sing. This is why, okay, look, listen, everyone listen to that. Did you hear that? That's why Billy's doing radio and not in a band anymore. <laughs> oh, please stop, guys. Well, yeah, dude, this is, a, this is another good fight. This is a very you good You didn't say fight. who the other opponent I'm, is. I'm waiting for Jorge you. Jorge Santiago, 170. Come on. Yeah, Santiago making, uh, what is this? This is his third UFC third attempt. Yes. Yeah. Okay, but this time it's at welterweight. Right. All right, when you look at who he's fought, the losses he's had in the UFC, Brian Stan. Chris Lieben, Damian Maya, Alan Belcher, all top of the line competition right. at middleweight. But now he's facing a real tough dude in Gunnar Nelson. A Henslow Gracie black belt was considered one of the greatest, you know, grapplers out of England in the last few years. Uh, was very impressive in his last fight, but he, he fought Demarcus Johnson on short notice. Right. All right, and Johnson got cut right afterwards. Santiago's beast. This is a real tough fight. It really is. Um, but I think I'm going to have to say that George Santiago is going to not be successful here in another trip to the UFC. 
Wow, you're me and you are. I think we're eye to eye on everything so far. Yeah, it's, it, it's you know Nelson is a top of the line grappler, and he's got great karate too. He's got good wrestling. Everything he's, he's got, got good, good everything. Uh, yeah, I don't think Santiago, Santiago, he's he's a guy who just he does so great everywhere except in the UFC. I think now is going to be no difference. Also, a guy who's had problems getting knocked out in the past. You know, he's 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 been separated from consciousness many times. I don't know if a weight cut is the best thing for you. You know, cutting a lot of weight a lot of times can play against your chin. And for a guy who already has a suspect chin, I don't know if that's the best idea. I don't know if Gunner you know can knock him out. But I'll tell you what, uh, uh, if Gunner's doesn't have the power to do it. The inability of Santiago's chin to take a blow could be enough for him to catch him. Or I could, ju- I really just see Gunner taking him down and controlling him from top position. You know, not playing in a jiu-jitsu game, shutting it down, using his 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 grappling skills to be anti-jiu-jitsu and a ground and pound one on one. You know, um, yeah, man, I, I I gotta go with Gunner. Yeah, and I don't know if you Gun- saw the- Gunner to the head. <laughs> I, I don't know if you saw the UFC weigh-in show this morning, but Chael Sonnen is really. Really big on Gunnar Nelson and just talked about what an amazing athlete he is. And I'm really looking forward to this fight. We saw what he did. I'm looking to see the same thing. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if, if he submitted Santiago. Let me ask you this. Have you heard anything? Is is he a small welterweight? Is he thinking about going to 155? I've heard there's talks that he could make it. Because, yeah, John Morgan uh, of MMA Junkie actually tweeted out. He said, I'm sitting, I'm sitting next to Gunnar Nelson now. If you think he's scary now, wait till he realizes that he should be a le- lightweight or he's going to be a light or something on those lines. But I was like, wow. Yeah. I mean, Santiago started his career at welterweight, you know, but like you said, a weight cut may not be the right thing to do at this stage of his career. Right. You know, and I agree. He's been great all over the world, but not inside the octagon. Right. Well, I think it's a unanimous for Gunnar Nelson. Who's gonna sing for us and play guitar after he wins <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow morning? I, I as was well. looking at this card and I saw Gunnar Nelson was fighting. You know, and I'm you like, knew I was oh my say god, something. Billy's so thrown out of Remember the Remain or whatever the name of that song. I just is. want to know where his twin brother is. That's all. <laughs> with the long blonde hair, they'll be cornering him. <laughs> all right. So, is, are we unanimous with Nelson or what? Yes. Everybody in the yes. room. All right. Looks like unanimous Nelson MMA fight corner. Now the next fight on this card, James. Real, real quick, real quick. I'm sorry to jump in there. That I just a little late delay here but so that would be what we're all calling a full nelson yeah (laughs) 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 it's a pro wrestling show now (laughs) just too good to pass up (laughs) (laughs) another stab at comedy uh james tahuna versus ryan jimmo fighting at 205 another light heavyweight fight here two big light heavyweights that like to throw leather that's this this the tagline of that fight i mean Tahuna, I think the only time he's lost in the UFC was to Gustafson. Showed, you know, the inability to really handle somebody who can grapple. And Jimmo, I mean, we've known what he's done outside the UFC, but inside the UFC, we've only got to see him for seven seconds. Tying the technically fastest knockout. Right. Well, it wasn't Dwayne's, but, you know, it's still technically the fastest knockout. Um,. You know, I think this is going to be one where, you know, I think Jimmo lost his first fight, too. It was his very first professional fight. He's been on a 17-fight win streak. Uh, you know, but he hasn't faced someone like Tahuna. And and I think if he wants to sit there and trade with a guy like James Tahuna, it's going to be a rough night. I th- but it, whoever, who, this fight ends in a knockout, I believe. Yeah, I'm with you 100%, man. Jimmo, aside from that seven-second knockout, He's been on the street, but he's not the most exciting, engaging stand-up fighter. He almost stalls and delays. And with a guy like Tahuna, he's going to get in your face. He's going to rip big, big hooks, big uppercuts. Um, I think he's got the better offensive wrestling as well. And I don't think Jimmo has the submission de- uh, offense from bottom to put to put Tahuna in a, in a bad position. I, I, I think you know Tahuna just dominates this everywhere this goes. And I think he could stop Jimmo. Yeah, remember the Jimmo uh, Sokaju fight. Yes. You know, you see how tentative he was yeah. against the striker. Like, like he's gonna be in a he was whole waiting. different world. And Tahuna, Tahuna, he's not gonna let you wait. He's uh-uh. gonna he's gonna get in your face. Bad intentions, relentless. He's had some cardio troubles in the past, but I, I think you know he'll he'll be able to step it up and, and, and put the hands on Jimmo. Yeah, you, you saw he got real tired beating up on uh, what's his name in the last fight. Yeah. Who, who did he fight? Um, no, I'm Making his you, Joey Beltran. Yes, yes. And he beat on Beltran like a, a heavy bag with feet for five, <laughs> for 15 minutes. It was brutal. But, you know, if anyone was going to take his shot, it was, you know, a guy like uh, the executioner. Yeah, the executioner, because Beltran can take a shot. But he was unloading on him. So all we're right. all going with Tahuna. Tahuna. I think. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's around. Everybody, Tahuna? Everybody, Tahuna. 
Amando. Wow, we, we're, we've actually agreed on every one, huh? Wow. Now man. I'm worried. Now, now you're worried. <laughs> now you're say, this, week, this week, I'm totally worried about this. Now, next fight on this card, Che Mills going up against... Ah, uh, the happiest guy I know, Matthew Riddle. <laughs> the happiest, the yeah. highest. <laughs> at one, yeah. and the highest guy I know, at 170 pounds. Well, th this fight was the uh, was another one where I was just slightly, I'm worried about Riddle's head in this fight. He <laughs> clearly does not like fighting in London. He's had issues there. Fighting a guy, a hometown guy, who's got great stand-up, and Riddle's a type of guy who, you know, at times will play into somebody's game. Right. He, he, you know, but I will be honest, for a guy who's had every single one of his professional fights in the UFC and is still like what 6 and 3 or 7 and 3, I don't know depending on I know he's one of that no contest because of the positive marijuana test. But he's improved like there's no tomorrow and to get, that's no better way to learn than on the job right. in the UFC. Right. All right, I think he's got better grappling, training with Drysdale here in Vegas. Drysdale, Mark Beach, yeah. you know, he's got a ton of studs over there. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, if he can be smart and not play into Shea Mill's game and, and try to stand with him the whole fight, I think, you know, we'll just see Riddle take him down, wear him out with the superior wrestling, maybe even submit him. Yeah, you know, the only the only question mark that, that, that lies over this fight for me is, is the same as you. Is, is, is Riddle going to do what he needs to do or is he going to do what he wants to do? You know, if he wants to come out there, which he always tries to show that he can hang, he can do his thing, Trey with Che, that's not the fight. That's not where you want to be. You saw Che even rock. You know, aside from the wrestling, Che was getting the best of Roy. He rocked him. He, he put him on, 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 you know, Bambi legs. And I think that Che did that to Roy. I think he could do that to Riddle. Riddle's been knocked out before. You know, but if I got a, a, a really good kickboxer who's not that great of a wrestler, and a really good wrestler with okay kickboxing, I'm going to go with the wrestler. You know, I'd be a yep. fool not to. Um, I know Che's in his backyard, but you know what? You're in the backyard where you're using your English wrestling. I, I, I just don't think, if your name's not Michael Bisping, you don't have the wrestling to get it done in this fight, in my opinion. Yeah, yep. And remember, Riddle's only been stopped once, but yeah. the one place yeah. it was was England. Was in, it was in England, and it right. was against. Uh, I can't. I always have trouble with his name, Nico. Nick. Nick. O. just Nick say Ostopic. Ostopic or whatever. Osopchik. Osep, Osepchik. <laughs> uh, Osepchik. Uh, uh, that was the whole. That was the whole. What started it all with Riddle? It right, was the piddle on for, Riddle. Yeah. And the guy said that he was going to pee on Riddle after the fight, and when after he knocked him out, he stood over him and gestured like he was urinating on him. And that really, I guess, besides the fact that it earned, a, you know, a lot of disrespect from the English fans that you're allowing somebody to do that to him, but that got in his head. So if he can stay clear, we're okay. That if they were like in a real street fight, he probably really yeah, would have done <laughs> I tell you, that sounds like me Tuesday night. All right, listen, for the rest of our picks for the fight card tomorrow, go to MMAFightCorner.com. Our percentage is going through the roof. I think we're picking them correct. And if you're lucky, as of right now, we'll see what happens. But if you stick with Joey Varner's picks, you maybe uh, do pretty well if you're in the betting game. Update, update, real quick on that uh, the parlay I threw out earlier. Got a text from my man Jason Ford, aka J J at John J Rambo Twitter handle. Uh, he actually said if you add Adam to the mix, I believe it. Hold on, let me just confirm this because I did choose Adam. Uh, if you add, hang on, FYI, if you add Adam. It's a thirty-eight to one five fart parlay. Oh my god, I got so it. I'm throwing a hundred. I'm gonna throw a hundred down. I got Adam too in I this fight. I picked Adam. Yeah, you know, I like uh, him. I, I think Adam's a superior grappler in, in this fight. He's facing a guy, you know, trains with the Nog brothers, but it don't matter. Adam's good at grappling. No, if your name's not not uh, Edson Barboza, I'm probably not gonna pick you against <laughs> Terry Adam. He's yeah. he's a beast. I love him everywhere he goes. Absolutely. All right, check it out at MMAFightCorner.com, and now. Well, all the breaking MMA news, we have a few minutes, and Heidi's going to come in with our hit list very quick, and I'm not going to do it again, Joy. Heidi's hit list. I'm going to make my own bumper next week. I know. So. Gonna You're going to have to, huh? Yeah. I no, 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 I promise. No, I, I promise. It. If you got want it. something Don't done, you gotta got to do it. it yourself. I always do. You know what I mean? So, uh, first of all, we have at UFC 160, Kane Velasquez versus Antonio Bigfoot Silva. The rematch set for the MGM here in Las Vegas, you guys. That is official as of the UFC. And also Alistair Overeem versus JDS, Junior yeah. Dos Santos, on that card. Memorial I know that Day Bigfoot's weekend. got a lot of confidence right now, especially after that win over Overeem. But I just see that fight, that rematch with Kane, just 
you know, unfortunately for Bigfoot, going the same exact way. Yeah, that's what I said. He's got a uh, he's got a puncher's chance. I think he has a puncher's chance. But like everybody, the way right. Kane's on a roll right now, the way he fought, looked against JDS, the way that what went down in the last fight, I'd have to be a fool to pick against Kane. And the way Alistair took down Bigfoot, it's a different At type will. of person that's going to be right. on top of you, ground and pounding, buddy. <laughs> it also became official this uh, week that Chad Mendes and Clay Guida are set for UFC on Fox Seven, April twentieth in San Jose. At the HP Pavilion. I'll that's tell you, nobody's awesome had more bad luck than Chad Mendez when it comes to fights sticking together. You know, I know he had a fight. Was it this pe- weekend coming up? Yeah. Got canceled, but it, hopefully this fight stays together. This is a good fight. Me, uh, Mendez versus Guida. Excited to see it. And then we have rumored right now by Tatame.com, a Brazilian news source outlet, talking about Vitor Belfort versus Luke Rockhold for May 18th. UFC on FX8 in Brazil. Oh, so that first fight is not going to be with anything Anderson Silva that it. This is, but they said this has title uh, implications. Isn't there another I great fight on this be, card oh, too? Oh yeah, there's another great fight. It's talk about uh, Jaco Ray. Sousa Jacare. and uh, oh, Costa that's, that's sick. Ooh, that's a good that's fight. That's a good fight. Those good two fight. Middleweight fights in Brazil. These Fox, FX, and Fuel cards get better and better every time. And the best Amen. part is they're free. Absolutely. On TV. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's g- great. The Kane and uh, and Bigfoot. You know, like I said, it'll be the same thing. But Alistair and Dos Santos. We're gonna get to see. It. We're gonna, probably gonna see Alistair knocked out again. I can't wait. <laughs> All right. Well. We want to thank Danny Castillo for giving us that great interview with Phil in his own private press conference. The interview itself was good, <laughs> just the sound was Like uh, I said, for the rest of it, go to MMAFightCorner.com. Also, uh, Yuri Villafort was supposed to join us, but I think he's heavily in training. And remember, he took this fight coming up with Nash and Burrell at UFC 157 on short notice, so... He's a very busy man right now. We may get him on the next show. We want to thank you, the fight fans. Remember, you can join us back here next Tuesday, 6 p.m. And go to MMAFightCorner.com for some breaking exclusive interviews and some really big news that we're going to have for you next Tuesday night. Until then, be safe. It is Friday night. MMA Fight Corner, Fox Sports Radio, 920.